Hello and welcome to the afternoon sessions of the Recap 2021 conference, online conference, of course. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you Mike Zaschke, who is a co-contributor to the um, Postgres SQL driver for CUP, so CDSPG, and of course, also the very uh, needed uh, database migration tooling uh, that uh, he will also introduce into to his talk. Um, together with David Scooter, uh, Volker Butzek, uh, myself, Mike is also one winner of the DevToberfest, which was held from SAP Developer Relations last year. And without further ado, let's hand it over to Mike. The stage is yours. Thanks, Gregor, for the introduction. So hello, everyone. And uh, again, thanks, uh, Gregor. Um, I actually I don't know what to say because you spoiled all my uh, presentation <laughs> with this introduction. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, so let me share my screen. Um, and um, in a second, OK. And yeah, as you mentioned, uh, Gregor, um, I do want to talk about using uh, the CUP Node.js flavor with other databases than SAP HANA. And um, yeah, um, this is, uh, why, why is this uh, even a thing? Um, because we do, we do have HANA, we do have the SAPDB and everything is working great. Um, but I really love the cloud application programming model and um, I really do. And um, this actually lands back to um, the HANA, HANA 1, uh, where I got in contact with uh, HANA CDS and XSO data stuff, and um, actually you can find the core concepts of uh, CUP um, there as well. And I really love that concept, but uh, actually we're bound to, to HANA as a database. And when I heard of, uh, okay, cool, there will be a node-based um, framework available for which follows the same principles and ha which has a modular design, I could easily drop in other databases and this would, yeah, make it a very, 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 very useful uh, framework, not only for uh, for sub specific use cases, but maybe also for ones uh, where I cannot uh, use HANA as a database itself. And um, actually, I'm not the only one. So if you look at the uh, sub community, you will actually find um, different uh, people asking the same questions. Uh, okay, great. So we have CUP. Um, how can I use PostgreSQL, for example, or um, again, Postgres or other databases like MySQL, MariaDB, et cetera? Um, because it's actually stated or quoted in the official documentation that based on this modular design of CUP, uh, it's easy to drop in other databases. So, and while this is true, um, when you actually look closer uh, to in the documentation, you will actually see that the real database support or, or the out of the box support is actually limited. So of course we do have HANA, uh, of course we do have SAP HANA Cloud um, and there is SQLite available, uh, but only for development purposes. Uh, the, I don't know, there's MongoDB listed in here and it should be uh, it's marked as planned for the Node.js runtime, but I haven't seen this yet. Um, but basically that's it. Uh, for the out of the box uh, supported uh, databases. And um, actually in my talk, I wanna focus on the last two points, um, meaning that uh, there is some kind of pluggable drivers architecture that is work in progress uh, that can be used to um, bring your own uh, database um, and add this to the cloud application programming model, or in case someone else did this, uh, you can actually see that if someone else developed uh, some database adapter, uh, you can easily use this and drop this in. So those are the two points I actually want to uh, talk about in my, my short, short talk. And I wanna start with uh, the last one first with the out of the box support. And I mean, it's also on the slide and uh, Gregor, you actually mentioned this before. Um, at least there is one uh, driver available, um, which is CDSPG. So let's just, uh, okay, just uh, uh, cool, uh, very quick. Um, I added this slide uh, very quick uh, after the keynote. And um, basically this is from the, from the keynote from David Hutzel and it basically uh, underlines my, my statement. So there will be also in the future only out of the box support for HANA and uh, HANA related stuff uh, or SAP related stuff. Um, and other database adapters will not be provided by SAP itself but needs to be implemented by our own. 
Okay, so let's talk about this out of the box support for Postgres SQL. Um, yes, uh, you mentioned this before, Gregor. Um, some of you may have heard of CDSPG already because um, it was part of last year's Oktoberfest and also a little bit uh, part of the TechEd. And this actually started, uh, I think it started way back um, after the last year's RecapConf, uh, where Gregor Wolf and Volker Butzak actually sat together and started implementing CDSPG. And uh, around Oktoberfest, actually some other members from the sub-community joined their efforts. And I think we now have a very stable uh, version um, available, which is open source. Um, and yeah, it can be used from whoever wants to use uh, Postgres with the Cloud Application Programming Model. Um, I added some links to this as well. So I won't talk too much on the, on the details here. Uh, there are yeah, the GitHub repositories where you can look into. Uh, there are also some blog posts introducing uh, both modules and give you a, a jump start and how to use those tools. Uh, there are also other blog posts um, um, and example projects uh, available on GitHub, so you will find some resources. Um, what I want to talk about uh, is a little bit of the differentiation between CDSPG and CDSDBM, and I actually want to showcase you how easy it is to drop those tools in and use it uh, with your cloud application programming model project. Okay, so first CDSPG and CDSDBM, what are those tools? Um, basically, it's described here. Um, internally, um, the Cloud Application Programming Model uses some formats, uh, CSN, CSEN, as I learned in the, um, in the introduction today, and CQN uh, as some internal representations of the data model and of the queries, of the incoming queries. So basically that's JSON, and the incoming OData queries and uh, definition of the CDS model basically gets translated into this, those, so those internal models. And from there, um, when you access, um, when you access the database, in this case, Postgres SQL, um, then um, CDSPG basically translates those, in, those internal models into uh, SQL that Postgres actually does understand. So basically that's the runtime part. Um, but um, to actually deploy your, your data model, your CDS model to the database, you actually need some additional um, functionality. And uh, even for Sapana, um, the deployment of, of uh, the HANA fragments to the database itself is not part of CUP, uh, but instead it uses uh, the HDI deployment module to actually deploy those HDI fragments uh, to the database itself. And uh, so we need to come up with our own solution. And that's why I came up with CDSDBM as part of the DevToberfest, uh, which basically um, yeah, uh, uses internally Liquibase, which is a Java-based framework to uh, deploy so this uh, data model to the Postgres database itself. Uh, and it does so by using advanced features, uh, like uh, we have things like schema evolution. So if you deployed, your first version to the database running production, do some changes and then later deploy the uh, updated data model. Um, then we do identify the changes and only apply the changes to the database. So nothing will break. Okay, so that's just the theory part. And um, yeah, I'm quickly going over to showcasing you how easy it is to drop this into an existing project. Okay, for this, I'm actually gonna use the Cloud, Cloud Cup samples provided by SAP, uh, which are a great project um, for, yeah, um, learning Cup because they showcase uh, some different, uh, they, they contain some different projects showcasing various aspects of Cup and how to use them. And I'm just gonna do a real life demo here. So I'm cloning this right into, um on onto my machine and um let's go into this and open code and i just want to showcase you uh, the steps you need to do um that hasn't opened yet where is it there it is um actually the steps you need to do to get this running on Postgres, right? So I'm going to have some problems with uh, the Zoom stuff here. Can I move this? Okay, I can move this. 
Okay, so I'm gonna edit terminal um, and just launch the um, the project once with um, a SQLite. So um, first I need to install all the dependencies uh, for the project. Okay. Um, this is fine. Okay. So, and then I'm gonna fire it up. So I'm gonna put in CDS watch, and we wanna look at the bookshop example. Um, and when I fire this up, you can actually see that it's using the SQLite memory database by default. And when I open the browser, and I did not reset this view, so just open the local host and probably look at the books. You can actually see that um, the books are there in the old data service, and there's even some default data that has been lo has been loaded by uh, the provided uh, CSV files. Okay, so I'm now going to show you the steps uh, you need to, to do to actually use Postgres as a database. So first thing we need to do is we need to actually have our Postgres database at hand. So for this, I'm just um, using Docker to fire up um, to fire up um, a database, right? And this is basically just using the the Ethan image and another image at miner to access this by via, via web UI. And I'm gonna save this and just run Docker compose up to actually start the database. So and when this went through. I will actually have a, a Postgres database running locally on my machine. Okay, and the next things uh, yeah, are the setup of, um, of uh, CDSPG. Okay, so first I'm gonna install CDSPG to this project, and then I'm gonna install CDSDBM, DBM. Okay, and those are now available. So, and the last part of this uh, is basically just replacing the configuration. So I'm gonna go into the bookshop example, open the package JSON, and you will actually see that here you can find the CDS configuration with, with, uh, which is set to default, meaning that in development scenarios, it will be using SQLite and in production environments, it will use HANA. And I'm just gonna replace this with another configuration from my, uh, which I've uh, copied before. Um, and it's not, even if it's longer, it's not that complicated because uh, we, in this case, we just want to use Postgres, uh, database of kind Postgres, and we define Postgres as in here. And we're basically telling the, telling the configuration that uh, the implementation of the database service is actually provided by the CDSPG um, package. And the rest is just uh, credentials. And in the last section, you will actually find some more configuration that is required by CDSDBM. Well, uh, because it needs to have different schemas for identifying the delta and deploying to the uh, public um, schema. Okay, but that's about it. So when I just um, go into the bookshop, um, then I'm not able to deploy the data model to the database itself. So for this, uh, sadly, I cannot use uh, the CDS command because it's kind of locked by SAP as of now. Um, so I need to provide my own version. So I'm gonna use CDSDBM. Uh, I need to prefix this with MPX. And actually I'm gonna deploy the data model. Uh, I have no database available uh, in Postgres. So I'm using the createDB command. And I also wanna load uh, the data, uh, the CSV files. Uh, via delta mechanism, uh, meaning that this is some feature that uh, is a little bit more advanced than the default cup version. Um, when you have uh, data in your CSV pipe, CSV tables, those who will not get uh, truncated. Okay, so when I hit this, you will actually see that, um, uh, yeah, the deployment is starting. It's creating the database because it's not yet available in Postgres. And it will then also load the CSV files. And when I fire up um, the CDF serve command right now, 
And again, uh, regarding CS Watch, sadly there's currently no support for CS Watch because again, we are not able to look into this. Uh, so if I up CDS serve, you can actually see that we are now connected to the Postgres database. So, and if I'm opening the browser as well and refresh, you can actually see that actually basically nothing has changed, uh, but the data is now served from Postgres instead of the SQLite database. Okay, and since I'm in a hurry, just a quick one. Um, of course, I can do all those fancy all data stuff in here. Uh, I can add filters, um, I can add expands, and everything is working uh, as expected. So uh, pretty great. Um, and this basically showcases you uh, that the core design, the module design of uh, CUP is really, really great. And if you have drop-in uh, support for um, um, a database adapter, it's just minutes and you get things up and running. Okay, so coming back to my slides, that was a really quick showcase uh, showing how easy it is uh, to drop in other databases if you, if you uh, have them available. But um, if not, what are the steps that needs to be done to actually build such a, a, a adapter uh, or a pluggable driver as SAP is calling it? So a quick look in the browser again, when you look at the documentation, you will actually get a sense that there will be uh, stuff coming up in the future. Like there is a uh, documentation on the database service consumption and uh, there's a specification of an insert result. It's marked as beta. And there are also uh, more to come um, mentions uh, around. So uh, I think it's to be expectable that uh, this will grow in the future. Uh, but for now, sadly, you don't have any kind of documentation on how to, to build such a, such a database driver. And I just uh, want to quickly go over some pseudo code <laughs> I generated for uh, CDSPG to actually uh, give you a sense on what it takes to actually build such a database driver. Okay, so um, basically that's the that's the real uh, file structure of CDSPG, um, and I will quickly go over the certain aspects and showcase you what each part actually does in that case. Okay, so. Just to mention, um, when you look at the original um, CUP uh, libraries, you actually see that they share a similar file approach, uh, but have much more files. And that's basically because uh, we can actually rely on those existing CUP functionalities and only override the specific stuff for uh, that we require for, for Postgres in that case. Okay, so the service class uh, is the main class, the main entrance point, and it's basically used for handling the connection to the database, right? So we are requiring PG, the PG, native PG model to actually talk to the database. And then the purpose of this class is actually to handle the connection to the database itself and to uh, using events uh, to delegate the events to the, those event handlers that basically generate the, the SQL from the CSN or CQN and um, you fire this against the database. Uh, then you have actually the execution part and um, you can actually yeah, reuse a lot of stuff that it's uh, living in CDS runtime. And so we are using the SQL builder um, to actually build this, uh, uh, yes, the, the SQL based on the C uh, CQN. And what we need to do is since we are having our own database connection, uh, we actually need to use the, those connection functions to actually execute to actually execute this to the database itself. And there's also one specific thing um, because the gener the SQL is being generated by a lot of uh, different builder classes. And because the uh, Postgres SQL dialect uh, needs to do some preparation, we can just in, uh, insert our custom builders that overwrite certain stuff. So in the SQL builders, you have the possibility to, yeah, to fine tune your SQL and uh, to adjust to the, as mentioned, to the Postgres dialect. So in this case, for example, uh, there's a locate function that uh, identifies the position of a certain character in the string. It's not locate in Postgres and Postgres it's position. So we need to rewrite this uh, or, or to overwrite this uh, for Postgres. Uh, the same applies to, um, to the database column names because Postgres internally stores everything in lowercase. And when we read data from the database, we need to actually use the entity column name uh, in the S clause to actually have the same uh, yeah, case uh, again. 
And as a last part, there is some conversions that need to be done. So we have CDS types available uh, that needs to be translated to data, translated to database types, and that's basically be done in the post processing and conversation uh, modules. Okay, so almost on time. Uh, just to wrap up, um, I think I've shown you that it's uh, super easy, uh, thanks to the modular des modular design of CUP, to drop in existing databases if there is an ex existing uh, if there is an adapter existing. Um, sadly, there's only one, as far as I know, which is CDSPG. Uh, but uh, potentially, um, as you've seen this now, you are motivated to actually engage uh, in yeah, the development of Postgres uh, or maybe come up with or your own solution for other database drivers like, drivers like MySQL, MariaDB, Oracle, MS SQL Server, CrowdGB, etc. Um, sadly, there's no official documentation available yet, and the stuff I've shown is probably based on a not uh, final API, so things may change in the future. Um, but I hope that SAP is being transparent about this and will come up uh, uh, with the uh, yeah, announcement when they change some of those important internals. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to learn more about, about this, you can actually look into the sub, uh, see this runtime module, which contains the HANA and SQLite uh, driver, and also see the SPG may be a good reference. Okay, so that's from my part. Um, I hope you, uh, yeah, you liked my, my talk and I hope you get, I grabbed your interest um, because as mentioned before, I think CAP is really, really great, even outside for things outside of uh, the SAP space. And I think it would uh, be really cool to have additional database adapters for other use cases. Okay, so yeah. with this. Excellent timing, you. Mike. Perfect, <laughs> as, as rehearsed also. Um, so I see no questions popped up in the chat or in the question pod. Um, one comment from my side, maybe just to add uh, for, uh, you had this nice slide with uh, yeah, perhaps other databases to be contributed. I think what we did also quite well in the CDSPG adapter is uh, unit testing and testing of all the generated SQL and testing also some the uh, OData APIs at the end. So uh, I think we laid really a, a foundation which could be reused in other projects, uh, just run our, uh, the same tests as we do. And uh, then you uh, will be yeah, have, having all this coverage of uh, all the cases with uh, yeah, draft support and so on. Yeah. Good. And yeah, it's a perfect segue just to also say thank you to you and the contributors to CDSPG. And uh, next is coming up. Um, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> come on. Um, we, we have the perfect segue to introduce and, uh, the next contributor to our uh, conference, Tobias Hoffmann because he will use uh, the CDSPG and CBSDBM, I'm sure, uh, yeah, to run CUP in other environments. So that is coming up uh, five minutes after um, nah, 13, 35, that's the timing. Yeah, here we go. <laughs>